All right, so now what we're gonna be talking about is the IMS stations and the answer key. So if you have any questions, uh, make sure you write them down and then you can get further explanation later. All right, with station one, what it asked for was to draw a sample of water, at least five molecules in a beaker, okay? Be sure to draw the molecules in their proper shape, which means bent, okay? So that's saying bent. And label the intermolecular forces holding the different molecules together with a dotted line. Okay, so what we need to do is we're going to draw some water molecules. I'm going to draw it like this. So we've got our O's and our H's. Here's one water molecule. And this is our negative. This is going to be our positive. Um, and so what is this guy going to be, the H going to be attracted to? Well, it's going to be attracted to a negative, which would be the O. And so this would be negative, this would be positive, and I'm actually going to color them in. The red is going to be your oxygen, okay, and then the other guy is going to be the other one. All right, so that's two of them, so let's draw another one. So we've got our oxygen and we've got our hydrogen, okay, and then I'm going to draw, I've got my oxygen here, hydrogen here. That's my negative, here's my positive, so it's going to be a church to the positive. It's going to be another negative. And here we go. We have our five. Okay, we have our five right here. Okay. So here they always are attracted. I'm going to show the one with a green line. So here's that attraction. Once again, this is not a bond. Okay, this is not a bond. The bonds are what I'm going to circle right now. These are your bonds. These guys are not bonds. They are just an attraction like a magnet, okay? So one magnet to another magnet, not the actual magnet within itself, okay? So these are not bonds, but these are your intermolecular forces. What type, because it's water, you have your H bond. So these are hydrogen bonds. And are they strong or weak forces? Well, in this case, this is going to be a strong force. It's not as strong as a bond, but because it's a hydrogen bond, it is fairly strong. All right, station two, what about London dispersion forces? Um, so how can a nonpolar molecule be attracted to another nonpolar molecule if neither have a positive or negative end? Remember, in order to be attracted to one another, you need a positive and a negative. You need opposite um, attraction, opposite charges to attract. Please draw a series of structures. Okay, so I did this on the board, but I'm gonna do it again. So explain why they have so much weaker. So here's our first one. If this is our electron density, right now we are completely non-polar okay so this is a non-polar but what's happening is, is these electrons are moving all over the place okay and so at one given moment we are going to have electrons more dense on one side than on the other side so in this exact instant okay this guy is still relatively non-polar so this exact instant, this is still nonpolar, but at this moment in time, we have more electrons on the left side, which means slightly negative than we do on the right, which makes that side slightly positive. There's still no attraction going on between these two molecules, which would make it an intermolecular force. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna see what happens. Well, what happens is, is that this guy on the left, oops, green, and this guy on the left is so electronegative Okay, um, that it's got this, it's not really so, it's got just the slight electronegative side and slight electropositive side. But the electrons on the right hand molecule, they're like, oh my gosh, I see a positive, I see that positive. So they're going to rush over to that side to be attracted to them. And right now, at this exact instant, we have a little bit slightly negative side on the left hand side of the right hand molecule. This right here is the only time there is any attraction. And why? Because this is the only time that you have that negative and that positive together. Well, these electrons are moving again. Once again, they're constantly moving. And so they will level out. And once again, you will become a nonpolar molecule. Oops. Nonpolar molecule. Okay. This is the only time that any attraction exists. Therefore, it is a lot weaker. Mm -hmm. Why is it a lot weaker than any like dipole-dipole interactions? Well, dipole-dipole always has a negative and a positive end, so they're always attracting to one another. In the London dispersion, this is the only time, so one out of the four pictures is the only time that they can actually show any attraction. Therefore, they're a lot weaker. It's done a lot less of the time. 
All right, rank um, rank the following in order of increasing IMF. So it's very important to be able to identify what type of IMF they have. So first guy, we have N, it's going to be bonded to H's with one lone pair. So this guy, drawn like that, is going to be a hydrogen bond. Okay, Cl to Cl, we've got, whoops. Cl to Cl is gonna be Cl, lone pairs, single bonded. You are going to have to draw some of these. This would be a completely nonpolar if you ask yourself all of those questions like, number one, does it, do I see arrows or does it start with a metal? Nope. Number two, is it um, a H directly bonded to an F, O, or N? Nope. So then you ask yourself, is it a hydrocarbon? Nope. Move on. Is it bent or trigonal pyramidal? Nope. Move on. Are all of them the same? Yes. So you have something that's nonpolar, which means that you would have London dispersion. CH3F, the structure drawn like this would be CH. And then we've got our F on the bottom. Okay, so you ask yourself the same questions. Number one, do I see arrows or does it start with metal? Nope. Is it H directly connected to an F or an N? I do have an H and I do have an F, but they are not directly connected, so nope. Is it, um, is it a hydrocarbon? Nope. Is it bent or trigonal pyramidal? Nope. Are all of them the same that are attached to the center? Nope. So this would be dipole dipole. And then we've got NaCl. So NaCl, you're going to ask yourself, oh, how am I going to draw that? Because I've got one dot on that guy and I've got seven on this guy. This is where it's going to whoop, donate it. So do I see an arrow in this drawing? Yep. So therefore it's ion, ion. So rank the following in order of increasing. So that means we're going from least to greatest IMF. So which one's the greatest? Uh, that would be ion, ion. So I'm going to say NaCl is over here. Okay, so that's that guy. Now comes hydrogen bond. So NH3 is next. Then we've got dipole, dipole is the third strongest. And then the weakest is Cl2. So it goes Cl2, CH3F, NH3, NaCl. All right, identify the types of IMF in the sample of each of the following. So CO2, we have a drawing over here like this. Okay, so you ask yourself, do I see arrows? Nope. Number two, is it, um, is it hydrogen directly connected to F or N? Nope. So move on. Is it a hydrocarbon? Nope. Is it bent or trigonal pyramidal? Nope. Is the center atom attached to the same things? Yes, which means this is nonpolar, which means it would have London dispersion. Okay. BF3. You ask yourself the same exact questions over and over again. So do I see arrows? No. Is it hydrogen directly connected to F or N? No. Is it a hydrocarbon? No. Is it bent or trigonal pyramidal? No. Is it um, all the same? Yes. So this would also have London. Uh, H2CO is a little bit more difficult to draw. What you should have ended up with is something looking like this. And when you follow all the questions, you find out that this is indeed polar because the center is not attached to all of the same things, which means this is a dipole, dipole. And then CUF2 is going to have two valence electrons. We're going to have two Fs, okay? It is a um, metal, so therefore we are going to be donating those things. Do I see arrows? Yep. Did the first element start with a metal? Yep. So this would be ion, ion, forming an ionic bond. It's an ion, ion. All right, choose the element or compound with the stronger IMF, justify your choice. So if you drew out this structure, this would be a hydrogen bond and this would be dipole, dipole. So which one's stronger? Hydrogen, okay? This would be linear CO2, which means that it is nonpolar, which means that it is London, okay? And OF2 tends, is, ends up to be bent, which means that it is polar which means that it would be dipole, dipole. So which one is stronger? OF2. C2H6 and C4H10, both of them are hydrocarbons. Okay, so both are hydrocarbons. The problem now we have to do is look at which one would have the stronger IMF. And you're like, wait, they would be the same. 
No, because with hydrocarbons, because that would be London dispersion, you now are going to base it off of its mass. Okay. Now, which one will have a larger mass? Something with two carbons or something with four carbons? Well, if you look at it, four of something is going to be greater than something with two. So it is going to be C4H10 will have a higher mass, which means it is a stronger IMF. And that only, the only time you look at mass is when you have a London dispersion between two London dispersions and you can't tell the difference. Okay, station six. Bring the following compounds from lowest to highest boiling point. Give the justification. So we've got calcium carbonate. What I know is that it's going to be an ion ion. How do I know that? Because it starts with a metal. Methane is a hydrocarbon, which means that it is going to be nonpolar, which means that it will be London dispersion. Okay. But why am I doing this? Because I know if I'm going from lowest to highest boiling point, I need to be ranking my um, IMFs. This guy, because we have a hydrogen bond right there between that O and that H, this would be H bond. And if I figure out the polarity of this molecule based off of that O in the center, which is bent, that means it will be polar which means that it will be a dipole-dipole. What you will notice on this structure and on all of these stations and on the test is that we will typically use one of each type. Um, so if you get one where you have multiple, like let's say hydrogen bonds, eh, you probably did something wrong. So the lowest to highest boiling point, it's gonna go in order of direct order of strength of IMF. So the lowest boiling point would be your London. So it would be methane is the lowest. I'm going to rank that as number, I would list it as number four. Then the next one would be dipole-dipole, so that would be dimethyl ether. The next one would be your hydrogen bond, so methanol. And your highest boiling point would be your ion-ion. Explain why nonpolar compounds typically have a much lower surface tension than polar. Well, nonpolar have no attraction to one another. So think of very, very weak magnets, if at all, no attraction. Whereas the polar molecules have that negative and that positive. So they always have an attraction to one another. And when you're talking about surface tension, you're talking about the ability to link one molecule to another molecule, to another molecule, to another molecule, to another, to another, to another, and not break it apart. That's what's going to cause the surface tension to break. So the greater the ability of these guys, of these guys to have this attraction that will not break between them, the more the greater the surface tension. So if you think about something as always having a negative and always being attracted to something that always has a positive, that's going to be a lot stronger than something that does not have any attraction to one another. Station eight, which of the following would be expected to have the lowest boiling point? So I look at all of these guys and I notice that their IMF is all London dispersion. So now I'm like, oh man, what am I going to have to do? Well, once again, you're going to look, oh, if it's London dispersion, what you're going to do is you're going to reference your masses. You're going to go off your mass. And what the mass is, is the lower the mass, the lower the boiling point. It is directly related. So the higher the mass, the higher the boiling point. So which one will have the lowest mass? will also have the lowest boiling point, which would be this guy, because it's at 30, 44, 58, 72. Okay, so if I asked for the highest, I would have circled the last guy. All right, label the above graph with the correct states of matter. So we're going to start, I see three of these angled lines. So I know I'm going to be a solid, a liquid, and a gas. At what, oh, and then in between would be a solid going to a liquid, liquid going to a gas. What stage or stage would the intermolecular forces be broken? I am going to star these with a here. And intermolecular forces are the attraction of molecules breaking apart. So what are you doing when you're breaking apart intermolecular forces? You're changing your spacing, which means you are changing states of matter. So here is where you are changing your intermolecular forces and they are being broken. At what stage would the temperature be changing? Well, just look at the temperature. When is it going up? It's here, it's here, it's here. I guess I should have triangled those. Oops, 
sorry. And what is the boiling point of the above substance? So boiling, I've got to think it goes from a liquid to a gas. So where on my graph is a liquid to a gas? I'm going to erase this. My liquid to a gas is right here, which means that my boiling point is somewhere less than 140 or 150. So I would say maybe like 145-ish, right? Because each of these is an increment of 50. And, you know, if you get 140, that's fine too. All right. Um, hopefully we did that one. Okay, and then the last station, number 10, of the following substances label the primary IMF, then place them in order of increasing strength. Okay, which increasing means lowest or weakest to strongest. So in reality, what I'm asking for is it's going to go from London to dipole dipole to hydrogen bond to then ion ion. All right, so I'm going to look for that ion ion first because I really like it. So ion ion will start with a nonmetal, so that's going to be that guy. So this is ion, I hope I said metal, ion ion. All right, then I'm going to, so I've got my ion ion, which I know is going to be right here. So I'm going to write NaCl. Okay, now I'm going to look for a hydrogen bond. This is kind of easy because there's only two elements, so I know that they're all going to be interconnected. So what is a hydrogen bond? Hydrogen connected to an F, O, or N. The only one that has an F, O, or N is NH3. So I know that this is going to be my hydrogen bond. So I'm going to write NH3. Now I'm going to need to figure out which one of these has London, meaning nonpolar, and which one's going to be dipole, dipole, meaning polar. So I now need to draw them. I've got H connected to S, so I'm going to make it look like this. And I've got C connected to H's like this. So this, or you could have looked at it and been like, oh, this is a hydrocarbon. I know all hydrocarbons are nonpolar, which means this is my London which means that that would be CH4 here. It's always best to check just to make sure. I would have drawn H2S and just seen, oh, well, this is bent, which means that it's going to be polar, which means that it's going to be dipole, dipole. So therefore, I would have just double checked. Why not, right? It's easiest to double check. So here is my order from increasing strength from lowest to weakest. All right, hopefully you have an understanding of these stations. Um, and if you need to revisit, then just revisit. Have a great evening.